Free jungle, the city of dreams. Frame blocking is a simple yet effective way to professionally transition your video clips. Let's see how Cold did this. We'll do it in Resolve. We're going to break down how he did these transition effects. There's three things you need to know. The first thing is, in order to get this effect, you have to record video clips with an object crossing the entire frame, either top to bottom, bottom to top, side to side, or diagonal. doesn't matter as long as it crosses the entire frame. The second thing is consider speed ramping if the object across the frame duration is, is too long. For instance, like one second or 24 frames if you have a 24 frame per second uh, timeline. Uh, the reason for that is it's just easier on you and it, the transition really doesn't look that great when it's extended uh, for a lengthy period of time. Play around with it to see what works best for you. The third thing we're going to need to do is to create a mask using power windows in the color section of Resolve. So we'll go through that uh, exactly how we do it. Now let's first break down exactly what Cold is doing here. We're going to play this back in slow-mo and let's see the first transition here. So he's got a clip here of him riding, uh, it looks like, through snow. And so as he's into his storytelling, he's going off on a journey, and his next stop is basically at the airport. So what we see here is a bench inside of the airport, and the person that's filming the video clip, is all they're doing is walking past that bench um, laterally. And so the nice thing here is all they're doing is masking out, and we'll show you how to do the mask in a minute, masking out the first clip with the second one as they move from left to right. So we'll show you how to do that in a minute. Now you'll notice one of the things Code does uh, quite frequently is he'll transition from one clip to the next uh, with very little time in between, you know, a second or two. So you'll notice here... Cold is walking in the airport, and then he's going to transition into a scene inside of the airplane. And the way he did this is he recorded a clip inside of the airplane of him panning from the ceiling down. So all he had to do was to, to mask out the other clip with the video transitioning uh, from the ceiling down into the uh, airplane. So that's all he had to do there. And then, as you can see here, he goes right into another transition, and it's just a transition where the, the camera is just being blocked by the seat in front of him. Very simple. And then he's able to mask that right into uh, the next scene, which is showing him at the, the uh, uh, arrival location where he's uh, collecting his baggage. So very simple, very straightforward. Um, here's another one. So again, he's got all these in, in, in a matter of five seconds, he's going through like four or five transitions. So the seat there, and then he's walking here, and then he's going to transition. Uh, this is either a person or some object, and it's going to, uh, he's going to use this to mask into the next scene. So very simple. It's basically the same thing. Uh, but the key there is as he's filming each of these, he's making sure to uh, block the frame with an object. And that's the key to this effect. It's recording it, and then the, the editing is actually very easy. Okay? So let's go into Resolve. Okay, guys, I've got two examples here to illustrate how to do this effect. The first one, I've got a car driving along, and then there is a cactus or a tree or something. Um, that is going to be used as the mask, and we're going to mask into this aerial of this um, of this resort. And so, in this case, since we're uh, traveling from right to left, if you look at the pole, it's going from the right to the left. We've got the first clip on top and a second clip on bottom. Now, in this second example, the first clip is going to actually wipe into the second clip. Okay. So you can see this individual walking through, and it's actually going to create the effect of, of masking from 
the first clip to the second clip. However, we do have the second clip on top in this example. And so I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's go ahead and go into our color section. Now, technically with DaVinci Resolve 15, you can do this also in Fusion. However, I've, from my experience, it's actually still easier to do it in the color section. So that's why it still works on DaVinci Resolve uh, 14 or older versions. So let's go into our color section. And the first thing we want to do here is to set up our defaults for the masking. So I'm going to select this first clip here. I'm going to go into power window section and I'm going to select the curve. So we're going to advance the clip here until right as we start the transition. So here it is. I'm going to advance it just the first frame into our mask where we want the mask to begin. So I'm going to I'll begin to draw. I'm going to select the curve here. I'm going to begin to draw this out. So I'm going to take it here, through there, there. Okay, so I've got this set up. Now what we want to do next is select inversion. And I want to see how this looks. Okay, so I click this here the highlight section which really basically shows the effect I'm gonna to go to full screen and take a look at it okay so it's as you can see there's a, a harsh edge here so we're gonna feather that out with the softness I typically set this to say somewhere between 1 and 5 I'm gonna say 2.3 or so and I'm gonna adjust it now let me go back here to the power window and adjust it ever so slightly in. Let's look at that, see how that looks. Now it's closer, but we still got a gap here. So what I'm trying to do, since there's a little motion blur in this effect or the transition, I'm trying to mimic exactly what the other edge of the, the tree or whatever. I'm going to add some to the outside. All right, so you can fine tune this so that it, it looks as natural as possible. Now what we want to do also is to create a alpha output. So we're going to right click up here in the node tree section. We're going to select add alpha output and we're going to connect that up. Okay, so now if I turn off highlight, there it is. All right. All right, so you can see here it looks pretty natural. Maybe a little a slight adjustment, but in general, it looks pretty good as far as that transition. So I mentioned here the importance of setting your defaults. So the defaults we want to set is inversion. We want to also set the softness, which should be replicated throughout so that we don't have to keep entering in new values. And the last thing we want to do is to uh, go ahead and enable dynamic keyframing. So I'm going to turn that on here to animate dynamic keyframing. All right. Now I'm going to advance one frame back. We're going to just move this out the way. Okay. So we're going to advance forward. And we're just going to move it back into place. All right. So you see it? Now all we have to do now is continue this throughout the, the clip. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward it here, and then we'll pick back up later. All right, so I made it down to the last clip here. And, and so we can see the effect taking place. So that's all you have to do for this. Now let's go into the second scenario. We've got a clip here near the beach, and it's going to transition to this uh, secondary clip where this individual is going to walk across and allow us to reveal the second clip. Now, you notice here, since we're transitioning from left to right, uh, we put the secondary clip on top. Okay, so the other thing I'm going to notice you notice here is it's pretty lengthy. This person's walking pretty slow. So I'm going to add a speed ramp uh, because in order for me to mask this, this hand's going to be really challenging, very difficult to do. 
So I want to make it easy on myself, do a speed ramp, plus it looks better. Okay, so I'm going to go here, let's see, maybe right about here. So I'm going to right click on the clip, retime controls, add uh, speed point, and I'm going to change this to say 400. All right, I'm going to let that advance through here, and then right about here, I'm just going to go back to 100. Add speed point, change speed, or reset to 100. That's fine. All right, and then I just finish it out right there. Maybe I'll advance this just one more frame, make it easy. Okay, perfect. All right. Now I've only got to mask it for 12 frames, but most of these are really straightforward. This is a little difficult. That's easy. That's easy. So most of it's pretty straightforward with the exception of the hand when it flares out. Okay, so we've got that done. Now let's go into our color section. Now, like I said, we're going to want to select the second clip uh, to mask in this case. So I'm going to go back into power window. Again, we're going to set our defaults. We're going to do the curve. I'm going to start this off. Let's start it off right here, the first frame where it crosses, right there. All right, I'm going to begin drawing. So, go there, go about there, 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 right about there. All right. So we've got that established. Let me go ahead and set the softness. Let's just throw a little in there, a little on the outside. Be a little less on the outside. Now let's uh, go ahead and right click here, add alpha output, add it in there. Okay, so now in this case, we did not have to invert because the clip that we're masking out is actually the secondary clip. So you can see here the difference if we were to do it that way. Okay, so we'll leave that there. We'll go ahead and now activate dynamic keyframing. I'm going to just register a point by just moving something real quick and putting it back just so that we get that first keyframe in there. Now I'm going to advance backwards just to capture this before. Advance forward, we've got the first one, and now we just have to continue to extend the mask out along the path. Okay? So I'm not going to go through that here since you've already saw the example of how to do that before, but that's how you do it. And when you're done, it looks like this. If you want to see the full length video, I'll leave a link up in the card section as well as the end screen. If you've got any comments or questions, please leave those below. Otherwise, I appreciate it if you could give me a like for this as well as if you're interested in seeing other tutorials, let me know what you want to see. Otherwise, stay tuned for the next one. Peace.